Hello and welcome back to my channel everyone for build episode number three of the Barra T4580. In this video we're going to go through engine conversion 101 and how I spec the intercooler AC condenser and the radiator. Then we're going to mount the 80 series brake booster to the 45 cab. Then we're going to put the steering in for the first time and plumb the radiator. <music> What I would give to have an accurate CAD model of this. It would make life so much easier for specking parts, um, but I don't have an accurate CAD model. And realistically, to model this up would take absolutely months. Like When a, a car has been designed, there is a team of people, engineers and CAD monkeys, putting this thing together. So I just don't have the time for that. So what I've been doing is mocking everything up with cardboard um, and just sort of testing whether it fits. And I think I think that's what you got to do. Um, it, if you you know first time engine conversion, no one to copy. I think that's the you know the best thing to do. So just on that, I haven't been able to find anyone to copy. I've seen barras in FJs before. I've seen barras in FJs on an 80 chassis before, but they all run rear mount radiators, and that's not what I want to do because it takes up a heap of tray space, and I want to put a touring setup on it. Or I've seen top mount intercoolers, and again. I don't want to run a top mount intercooler, um, I guess for the heat soak at low speed applications. I can get really nerdy and go into the full explanation of why I think a front mount is better than a top mount, but I'm going for gold and I'm going to try and fit a front mount on this bad boy. So yeah, cardboard, cardboard is the best way to do it. I've just sort of been scratching my head and putting it everywhere. Um, everywhere you can think of, you know, upside down, that sort of stuff, and it'll save you a heap of money and time. So I bent up this bar, I used Lawrence's bender, and it's a radiator intercooler oil cooler mount. So it goes from shock tower to shock tower. I've just got some tabs for my radiator at the moment. Um, I'm going to run a, a bar from here down to here, because at the moment you can see like, there's actually quite a lot of stuff that's going to go on the front there and it'd create a moment around here um, and put a heap of load on here. Also, not the best tube notching. Really hard to notch something like this. Um, I was sort of holding it in free air. So nothing five kilometers of MIGWI won't fix though. This is my 75 series radiator. So this is an aftermarket one by Terrain Tamer. Look how perfect it is for my application. So that's one of the ports there, which will go to my thermostat outlet. I'm actually getting a new thermostat with a swivel, so it'll make the radiator hose a bit nicer rather than going up here. It'll sort of just go straight down. So that's coming in the mail. And then the bottom outlet over here will go straight to my water pump outlet. Um, so yeah, it, it works really well. When the bonnet closes, I'll show you some clearance later, but it's all good when the bonnet's closed and then it sort of sits sits down a little bit at the frame rail there. I've packed out the back of this with a couple of pieces of timber to get me my shroud distance. I think the shroud is going to be about 20 mil from the back of the radiator fin, so that's what I've used to pack it. And then I've got my spal fans. This is one of the best fans, electric fans that money can buy. So it's got 3000 CFM uh, to those of you who know anything about radiator fans that's quite a bit so with a, an airtight shroud that should do wonders when i was specking my radiator and fan i literally just went for as big as possible have a look at that thing so with the actual front end on this is pretty much the one of the bigger ones that you can get in there so I, i'm sort of i'm starting with the best cooling setup and well if it doesn't work then i'm kind of screwed um i don't really know what i'll do but I think it should work because look at the size of that thing. It's bloody massive. So I've been running numbers. I think I might be able to just squeeze a front mount intercooler in here. And I'm going to put in a smaller AC condenser up the top here. I'll show you the diagram. I'm a very visual person. I need to draw everything to understand. So I've drawn out all my parts and, and how I think it's going to fit. And I think we're at 246 and there's 270 mil in front of the engine. Let's just see if we can make it happen. So the first step to do that is I'm going to weld on two brackets. So the intercooler, you can see it has lugs here. This is an airflow 300 by 450 intercooler. Now, when they're actually talking about the intercooler sizing, here's a hot tip for you because I ordered the wrong size. So 300 is the actual height. 
And then when they quote 450, it's uh, the size of the fins. And then this is actually extra, so it's a bit longer than 450. So I ordered a 600 by 300, and it wouldn't fit in between the rails, whereas this one will fit in between the rails. So, yeah, I can drop it down that little bit extra, which will give me a bit more space for an AC condenser up the top here. So when it comes to specking an intercooler, bigger is better. So you get better fuel economy and more power. So this is a stock Falcon intercooler. And then this is the one that I'm using for the build. It's just an Aeroflow one. They're around the $200 mark, nothing too expensive. But it's bigger, it's actually thicker if you have a look from the other side. So yeah, that's the total thickness there. I think that's 76 and then these are like 50, 50 something. So overall, there's gonna be far more heat that dissipates in that. And that's pretty much the biggest one that I can fit in the front of the car. So that's why I picked it. Just cut out some square plates that I'm gonna mount the intercooler to. Mounted up the intercooler. Have a look, it's pretty tight on the engine side with the fan, but there is probably, oh, I don't know, 30 to 40 mil of clearance. That fan's about in the right spot, but it probably could go back if my shroud does end up being bigger. And the intercooler is in. I've welded those tabs in down the bottom here now. AC condenser has rolled in. It's sitting, a little bit proud of the radiator on this side which I don't love and it's also sitting flush on the intercooler so I wouldn't mind a little gap in between there so what I'm gonna do is cut the intercooler mounts drop that down a little bit and then I'll be able to make some mounts for this AC condenser and I'll make them some final tabs for this because I don't love this tab and it was just sort of temporary while I was mocking up stuff all right just got done moving those tabs so now the condenser doesn't sit proud of the radiator anymore which is fantastic news and i've just test fitted the front just to see what it's like look at that nice black and stealthy let's have a close of the hood it's pretty hard to see on the camera actually but there's probably 50 mil between the condenser and the top of the bonnet have a look at that nice and stealthy these are my radiator tabs i'm redoing them for the fourth time uh, it's been a struggle to figure out the radiator position and then also I want to be able to get it in and out relatively easy without taking too much off so hopefully this is the final time I've just got to drill some holes and do a few more tacks so I have finished welding the tabs off and I've put a rubber mount from a 75 series now there is a mount that I cut off and I'm going to have to use it on the side here um, and I've got some more rubber mounts for that. I, I will do it eventually uh, when I'm sort of finalizing the front end packaging. When it comes to specking AC condensers, bigger is better. Bit of a running theme for all the front end components. Um, I guess if this is too small, I can always mount one side, one next to it. So there'd be two and I could run them in a series. That's my initial thought. Look, the cab on this thing is quite small and the windows are vertical, so I don't think the sun loads will be too high, but I don't really know. I haven't done any equations or math to work it out. I'm just gonna roll with it. So that sort of wraps up the end of the front end packaging. I actually ended up grinding the, the top lugs off the intercooler because I didn't like them, and it gave me a little bit more clearance and freedom of where I can put this. I'll weld some tabs to it later when I get my oil coolers sorted. Um, I put some bolts underneath the intercooler uh, with some spring washers on the bottom lugs. Yeah, so that's it on the front end packaging for now. Let's get on to the brake booster, steering column, and plumb the radiator. Here's my steering column. So I don't actually know what's been done to it. This is sort of part of the deal that I worked out with Lawrence. Um, I know it has been shortened and I'm pretty sure the spline has been recut into it. And here's my 80 series box. Not 100% sure on what this unijoint is. I'm pretty sure it's off a KUN26R Hilux, but I can't confirm that. It was one that was just lying around. First time I've had the steering system in the car. So there's about 10 mil between the turbo and the steering column on the hot side. And then on the cold side, yeah, probably about 10 mil as well. Got the wheel on and have a look. The wheels turn. How bloody good. Bit of the rotating assembly. I'm not gonna do anything about this clearance issue for now. 
I'm just going to have a think about it. If anyone's got any good ideas, let me know in the comments. I know hot rods do some pretty funky stuff with the steering. I really want to avoid high mounting this turbo. As I mentioned before, I want to keep this engine as stock as possible like it was in a Falcon. On to mounting the brake booster now. I'm using an 80 series chassis which has disc brakes all around. So to make it work, I'm using an 80 series brake booster as well. This is one I picked up from the wreckers and the brake booster has to be flipped to give a little bit more clearance under the bonnet. These are adapter plates from Billy McKinnon. So apparently they both go on the engine side. And then I've also got a pedal in here somewhere. So I'll just put the pedal on the pedal box, make sure the clevis fits and then uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, I tried to fit the brake booster in here. It doesn't fit, it hits this rib. So I'm just gonna grind it out. I've marked where I'm gonna cut. So I have actually seen them fit inside this rib before, so I'm not sure whether that's a later model with maybe the, the pedal box. I know it's got a different pedal box than the later model, so maybe it's a little bit more over or something like that. Hot tip for anyone filming build videos, don't ever leave your GoPro too close to the angle grinder. Have a look at this, the lens or the lens cover. It's quite damaged. Um, you can sort of see it got burnt with the angle grinding. Lesson learned. Not sure why, but my high quality Audi hole source didn't work on this, even though they're made in Germany. So the only option I had was to angle grind it. So I just cut a square out and now it all fits up. Pretty hard to do this whilst holding a camera, but I'm doing it for you so I can get it through there. So my plan is to weld weld these two plates onto the firewall. I'll show you, show you how it pans out. To get the 80 series brake booster into the older style pedal box, I've had to grind out and drill out the holes. So just to get the nuts in on the other side. And because I've taken away a fair bit of the pedal box, I actually, um, I decided to weld one of these plates. So if you had a newer style pedal box, you just, it's just a straight bolt in, but I've welded this plate on. Got my brake booster and master cylinder on. So I actually ended up having to use the two plates in there and I'll show you why. The clevis is fully wound in and the brake pedal's sitting out here. And I guess if I didn't use that um, that second plate, the the brake pedal would be way further out here just because of the lever. You can see here I've got my Falcon pedal set up um, and you can see that the brake pedal is sitting proud. Now, obviously I don't want that. I'm just gonna mock it up for now and I'll figure it out later. So based on the seating position, I will adjust either one of these. I am planning on putting this rib back in some way, shape or form. There's a heap of load that goes through the brake pedal when you stamp on it in an emergency or just in general. So yeah, it does need some extra bracing there, but I'll do that when I'm doing the body work. 80 series brake booster mounted, really happy with it. Let's go plumb the radiator. I want to get this thing up to temp, so I want to run coolant through it to check if the head's okay. And one of the things that I forgot to put on was the heater line. So it's pretty hard to blank out these ports. Have to take off the manifold and put them on. So that's a hot tip to any, uh, any barra punter. Make sure you put the heater line on before the manifold. I can't work out a way to put it on otherwise. Just put the heater line in for the first time. I don't love the way it sits. The out outlet's there, which I don't think is going to work for my application. I don't really know how my heater and air con's going to work, but I'm just thinking I'll just cut it and shut it and put this nozzle to here. And then, um, yeah, I won't have to do the disassembly and reassembly again of the manifold. Got the heater line in now, and then have a look at where the port comes out now. It's flush with the gearbox, so I'll be able to, it, it seems way more usable now. I think the heater is going to be up here somewhere, not quite sure. I've just looped the heater hose out the back here so I can start the engine and no coolant will come out. Um, another one for you is I put on 
the original Falcon trans cooler. Now I do plan to swap this out. I have heard of problems with these, the trans oil and the water mixes. So I'm going to delete the water factor and just go oil to air. I don't know where I'm going to mount that. I think up the front. Using some random rubber hoses just for now to put the coolant in and get the engine up to temp. So when I was filling up the coolant, it started coming out of here. There's obviously a port here. I was wondering what it was the whole time. I think it's for the trans cool. I'm not really sure, but I've just plugged it up with a hose for now and I'm gonna have to find a proper blanking port eventually. So the radiator's plumbed up now and we're one step closer to starting the engine. Apologies for anyone who thought this was going to be the engine start video. When I was editing, I had so much footage that it made way more sense to split it up into two videos and I promise the next video will be the engine start video. I really appreciate all the comments, the feedback and the advice. So keep them coming as it keeps me more motivated. And I'm really humbled by the amount of interest there is for just a regular dude building a Land Cruiser in his shed. So cheers guys.